Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Debbie Pates and welcome to Wellness Wednesday. Uh, I think, yeah, it's just noon right now, so why don't we go ahead and get started. Um, I, I typed in the box over there, the title box, um, the name of a book and I'm going to show it to you right now. I'm going to come up here. Mm -hmm. It's called The Seeker and the Monk. Here's the title and, um, or the cover. And uh, I'm going to talk about the book for a moment and more really about my experience with the book. But anyhow, come on into Child's Pose and why don't you get started. So before I blab on, well, I guess I'm going to start talking, but... Um, Settle into your breath and begin to tap into your body. Start to create a space for yourself, create a space for this practice. Stepping into the yoga. And I wanted to talk about this book. So it's, I, I was going to look up how many weeks I've been doing this live yoga or, a, well, online live yoga. And, um, I, I didn't, but it's, we're coming right up on 50 at least that I have actually recorded. And that doesn't even count times that maybe I was sick or on vacation or something like that. So and we all know, you know, this pandemic's been going on for a year plus. And at times it can feel like I'm just sitting in my living room talking to myself. And that feels weird and lonely. And sometimes, honestly, a little bit pointless. And there are days when I doubt whether this is worth doing. And... I was reading this book, The Seeker and the Monk, by my college friend, Sophronia Scott, and um, she was talking about, um, it, it's about the monk Thomas Merton and her sort of imaginary relationship with him. Um, well, it's a real relationship with him, but imaginary that she could talk to him. And um, She's talking about being in a, in a hermitage, being in a cloister as he was as a monk. And um, she says that perhaps on some levels, quarantine is like being in a cloister and how much good had come out of it. And I was reading and um, I was reading and she's talking about pictures of homemade iced cinnamon rolls and crusty brown loaves of bread pencil drawings of a koala bear, watercolors of flowers, people singing and dancing, one of my college classmates doing yoga on live video once a week. So I might have just registered a little bit again of my delight, but you're not looking at me, hopefully, because you're in child's pose. But I can't tell you how much that invigorated me, that this offering that I have been doing from my heart because it felt like a way to connect and allow people to connect with themselves had touched somebody. So much so that I even got a little line in the book, although I don't know for positive that it's me. But anyway, so thank you guys so much for showing up each week here and helping to contribute your energy to this. Hopefully we will be able to meet again in person and that is plenty of Time for you guys in child pose. So push up on your hands and knees and do some cat cows working with your breath. I guess part of the moral of that is it's not every day we get a mention in a book, but you never know when your words are going to lift somebody. You never know when your words are going to be exactly what somebody needed to hear to keep on going. So don't be stingy with your words. Don't be stingy with your kindnesses, with your appreciation. Come on back to a neutral spine. Extend your left leg and your right arm out and try to really engage here. So maybe checking in, are you sagging in your torso? 
Can you push into your left hand and get a little bit of spaciousness maybe in your left shoulder? Reach through right fingertips, reach through left heel or toes, engaging your whole body here. You can really work your muscles if you want here. And then put right hand, left knee down and switch. Right leg, left hand. Make a choice. Do you want to point your toes or flex your toes? Check in with your torso. Balance yourself out here, right? So that you're, you're as best as you can having your body be even with the mat and reaching through, reaching through your hand and foot, even now creating space and then put it down and make your way into a downward facing dog. Lift your hips up. I was practicing the other day and I heard this, um, this, this, this cue here in downward facing dog that imagine that you are leaning over a bar and the bar is kind of hitting right at the top of your thighs and you can, you can lean into the bar and create length in your spine. So the bar is sort of helping you pull back and you can, you can, um, Intensify that by really pushing into your hands and imagining that you're leaning over that bar. Creates spaciousness in your, in your belly, underneath the belly button. Allow your shoulders to relax here. So lots of engagement, but let your shoulders move back and down. Let your heels sink to the ground. And if you've been doing small movements, maybe you know, working with these adjustments as I say them, or maybe you've been pedaling out your dog. Maybe try to come to stillness now for a moment. And just breathe. And notice where it's difficult to stay still. Perhaps your hands are shaking. Hopefully your stomach or, or chest continues to rise and fall with the breath. Maybe closing your eyes or steadying your gaze, right? Not having your arms dart about, or arms, I meant eyes. Not having your eyes dart about helps steady your mind. And then take a bunch of baby steps. Come up to the top of your mat and hang in ragdoll. Down dog is an inversion. Ragdoll is also an inversion. Maybe you want to bend your elbows, tuck hands, and crook of opposite elbows here. So any, any yoga pose that, uh, in which your head is below your heart, that's an inversion. So yes, there's the fancy inversions, handstand, etc. Um, and we're going to end with an inversion today, shoulder stand. But there's also many, 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 much more humble inversions we do throughout our practice and there's nothing wrong with humble inversions if your arms were clasped to release them toe heel your feet out a little bit and uh this is a little tricky to explain but i want you guys to slide your hands behind take your take your arms and put your arms behind your shins bend your knees as much as you need to and then you might have to actually walk your feet in a little more and, and grab onto the top of opposite shin. So let me see if I can wiggle around here and then pull to whatever degree you can. And that might be zero degree, right? But just getting a deep stretch across the backs of your shoulders, down your whole body, breathing into that, really taking deep inhales. And notice how the inhales impact the shape that you're in, and then release and roll up to standing. Knees soft, head last, and then when you get to standing, roll your shoulders up, back and down, and shine your palms forward. Engage, engage here. Lift your kneecaps. Engage your quadriceps. Shine your palms forward. Standing here in Tadasana, standing at attention, breathing, maybe making a, making a, a,
and into setting an intention for your practice today or not. And then let's flow through some uh, variations on sun salutations. Inhale your arms up and then exhale, dive forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, put your hands down, step back, high plank. Lower, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Pause here. Pull your shoulders back. Pull your heart forward. Hands are flat on the mat, and if they're not, think about whether you might be able to make them a little more flat on the mat. Keep your tops of the feet on your mat, and then roll over your toes. Lift up your hips. Downward facing dog. Lift your right leg up. Shift forward. Come on into plank. Stay here. Your right leg doesn't have to be any specific uh, height, just off the ground. Shift back into downward facing dog. Put your right leg down. Left leg up. Again, doesn't matter how high. Shift forward, high plank. So really try to be, be uh, real, have integrity in this high plank here. So you're not in down dog. You want your body to be as flat as it can be, given the shape that we're in. And then come on back up, three-legged dog. Put your left leg down. Lift your right leg up again. Shift forward, high plank with right leg up. Lower, chaturanga with right leg up. High plank, three-legged dog. Switch, left leg up. High plank, low plank. High plank, three-legged dog, left leg down, inhale, oh, exhale, shift forward, both feet on the ground, chaturanga, back up, high plank, two more, they're push-ups, chaturanga, back up, high plank, one more, chaturanga, back up, high plank, shift back, downward facing dog. Breathe. If it would feel good right now, you can drop your knees to the ground and be in Anahatasana. Everybody actually give it a try. Drop your knees to the ground. Keep your hips over your knees so you're not in, you're not in child's pose, but your forehead can rest on the ground. And squeeze your elbows together a little bit, broadening in your shoulder blades. Let it feel good. And then tuck your toes. Come on back up, downward facing dog. Look in between your hands and step, jump hop, top of your mat, halfway lift, lengthen, exhale, fold, fold, take that length down, sweep your arms up, rise, bring your hands together and bring your hands into your heart. Sweep your arms up, fold, fold, bow, Lengthen halfway, step back, high plank. Lower, chaturanga, upward facing dog, two, downward facing dog. Inhale, and exhale, and then step up again, top of your mat, halfway lift. Fold, fold, sweep up, rise with a flat back. Bring your hands together overhead. Grab some celestial energy and pull it into your heart. Arms up. Fold, fold. Lengthen. Take it back. High plank to low plank. Up, we're facing dog. You can add a push up in if you want on your way. Two, downward facing dog. And when you get to down dog, breathe in. Ah, breathe out. Maybe even breathe in and then exhale with a sigh. Ah, letting go, letting go of stuff that we're holding on to. Inhaling the good, inhaling energy, inhaling positivity and hope, and exhaling what we no longer need. Letting each exhalation be a completion of the past. 
look up at the top of your space and make your way there, halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Sweep your arms up, rise. Bring your hands together overhead. And bring your hands into your heart, arms up. Utkatasana chair. Tuck your tailbone to take the um, curve out of your back. So Utkatasana chair pose is not a back bend. Okay, and then maybe sink a little bit lower. And maybe pay attention to what's going on with your knees, with your inner thighs. If your feet are separate, you want your knees and your thighs to be tracking over your feet. Keep breathing and then forward, full dive, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, make your way to downward facing dog. Keeping your breath flowing as you move. And when you get to downward facing dog, lift your right leg up. Wheel your ankle around a few times. And then maybe bend your knee and open your hip if you want. As always, using familiar movements as a way to check in with how your body is really showing up today. And then bring your left leg back, right leg back down. Same thing, left side. Lift your leg up and then first, just without even bending your knee, make some circles with your ankle. Maybe both directions, just noticing what's going on with that joint. And then bend your knee, you can open your hip. Notice what's going on with this joint. I think your hip is the biggest joint in your body. It's a pretty important area there. And then bring your right leg, sorry, left leg. Left leg back down. Lift your right leg up and bring it through, low lunge. Keep your left heel up and come up to, bring your hands to your right thigh. So bring your torso up, but hands on your right thigh. Take your right hand and bring your right hip crease back a little bit. Notice any, any tension in your left uh, in, the, in your low back, and so maybe bend your left knee a little bit, and then lift your arms up, crescent. Sink further into your right knee. So whether, regardless of whether your knee is bent to um, protect your low back or not, we're going to do some deeper knee bends now. So on an inhale, bend your left knee and your right knee too, right? Bring your left knee all the way down to the ground, and then exhale, bring it back up, maybe straighten it. Inhale, left knee down. Exhale, bring it back up. Inhale, left knee down. Exhale, back up. Two more. Down, up, down, up. Bring your hands into your heart. Drop your knee to the ground, why not? And twist, left elbow to the outside of your right knee. Hmm. Enjoying the twist. Trying to get um, energy through your upper body. So you are really engaging the upper body as well. Pushing knee into elbow, elbow into knee. And then come on back up. Crescent lunge, lift your back knee and open up warrior two. Reverse your warrior. A lot of work on the right side there. Come on back down. Step back, high plank. Chaturanga. Up dog. Optional. Push up on the way back to downward facing dog and then lift your left leg up and step it through, low lunge. Stay on your right toes, left heel and ankle in line. Oh, come on up to your left thigh. Making our way into crescent. 
Move your left hip crease back, noticing that the right hip point comes forward. Checking in with your low back. Lift your arms up, and then let's go. Five knee bends, right knee. Exhale, and then in, inhale down, exhale up. Two. Three. Inhale down. Exhale up. Inhale down, exhale back up, bring your hands in to your heart, drop your right knee, and twist right elbow outside of your left knee. So try to keep your stomach and your chest from collapsing onto your leg. And that doesn't mean they won't touch, right? This isn't about the size of your body. It's about trying to remain active. And then unwind, tuck your right toes, lift your right knee, warrior two. Reverse your warrior. Thank your left thigh for all it's doing. And windmill down, high plank. Make your way to downward facing dog. Hmm. Ah, and breathe in downward facing dog. Mm. Lift your right leg. Bring it through low lunge. This time spin your back foot flat and rise up to warrior one. Try to get your left hip point facing forward, prime. And then open up warrior two. So also, you know, a lot of times I'll talk about keeping your right knee tracking open and imagining that your left hip point could open up. And we're still thinking about that, but what I heard recently is also, you know, allowing your, for a lot of people, allowing your left hip point in this shape to track, to, to go forward a little bit keeps uh, makes it easier for a lot of people to keep their right knee tracking out. So experiment with what works in your body. And then reach forward, reach, reach, and then tilt. Extended side angle. Maybe today, experiment with putting your hand on the floor or a block on the outside of your left, right foot. Reaching your left arm up. Bring your right, left shoulder, left ear. Oh my goodness, you guys, sorry. Left bicep by your left ear. And if your hand's on the ground, your, your chest may be pointing more toward the ground as well. It's, it's a more closed version of this shape for many of us. And then come on back up, warrior two. And windmill your hands down. Step back, high plank. Experimenting, chaturanga. Up dog. Make your way to down dog. Step your left foot forward, spin your right foot flat, warrior one. So in warrior one, we definitely want, it's a closed hip position. Both of your hip points moving toward forward. Moving toward forward. And then in warrior two, maybe your right hip point begins to move back as you continue tracking your left knee out. Inner thigh engagement here. But maybe, like I said earlier, you let that right hip point come a little forward if that facilitates your left thigh moving out more. And then reach, 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 reach. And left hand on a block or the outside of your left foot. Start with your right arm reaching up. You can bend your knee really deeply here. That will help your, your knee even beyond your shoulder. And then bring your bicep by your ear. Reach, 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 reach. Right arm back up. Warrior two. And take it down. So moving slowly sometimes actually engages the muscles 
more. Make your way to downward facing dog. So a, a, a quick moving vinyasa class might get your, get your sweat going, get your breath going. But in a lot of ways, slowing down the movements actually taxes, not taxes, but engages your muscles even more. Let's, let's ch experiment with that. Rock forward, high plank. And as slowly as you can, lower down all the way, all the way onto the ground. But do it slowly and feel your biceps, feel your core engaging. And then when you get to the floor, untuck your toes and reach your arms out in front of you. Reach your arms out in front of you, thumbs facing up. And we'll do the, what I think of as the Superman version of locust pose. So when you're ready, lift everything, whatever you can. Whatever you can lift, lift it up now. Go for it. Be glorious. If not now, when? What are you waiting for? You're ready now. And then release. Bring your arms by your sides. Turn your head to the right, left ear on the mat. Notice how close your left, your chin is rather to your right shoulder. And maybe you can keep in your left ear on the mat, move your chin away a little bit. Just stretching your neck. Mm, allowing your body to relax, allowing the floor to hold you up. And then bring your chin or forehead to the mat. Clasp your hands now behind your back. And we're going to do a, a bound locust. So when you're ready, once again, lift. Lift your shoulders, lift your chest, lift as much of your belly, as much of your legs as you can. Also, though, you're not just looking for lift, you're looking for length. So your crown of your head reaches forward as your fingertips and toes reach back. Length, and then release. Turn your head to the other side. And once again, see if you can move your chin away from your left shoulder this time. See, see if you can. The answer is going to vary for everybody. You're just checking in. It isn't an excuse to be mean to yourself. What would you say to a friend if your friend were like, oh my God, my neck really hurt and I couldn't, couldn't move my chin off my shoulder. I'm a bad person. What would you say to your friend who said that? Can you use those same words and apply them to yourself? on back center. A bow pose. Bend your knees and reach back and grab your feet from the outside. And one last time on our stomachs here. Kick. Kick and lift. Kick and lift. Lifting your knees. Lifting as much of your thighs as you can. Can you, are you back bendy enough that you can balance on your navel and look like a teardrop. I cannot, but some people can. And then release. Put your hands underneath your shoulders and come on up into a, so actually put your forearms down and let's come on up into a sphinx. Forearms down, elbows underneath your shoulders, palms flat, and maybe even engage your legs so much here that your knees are a little bit lifted even though your quads are on the ground and you're pulling, pulling your heart forward and your shoulders back and then release. Bring your hands under your shoulders, tuck your toes, push up high. to the top of your mat and make your way there. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, forward fold, bend your knees, rise, Utkatasana. And bring your hands to your heart 
and twist left elbow to the outside of your right knee. Maybe bring your feet in to touch if they weren't. And then make sure that your knees are even with each other so that you're evening out your sacrum. I think words are really powerful. I started with a sentence from a book that had it made such a big difference to me. I can't even tell you. It kind of gave me a, a shot of energy that I really needed in my life. Release. Toe heel your feet apart, about hip width distance, shoulder width distance, whatever you like. And slide your feet underneath, slide your hands underneath your feet, palms up. And then lengthen. A little bit of a halfway lift and then fold. A different version of that deeper back bend, or I mean a forward fold that we tried at the beginning of the practice. I know that it's, um, it's really common for people to have a lot of weight in their heels here because it feels like you're going to fall forward. But maybe experiment with trusting yourself and rocking your weight a little bit more into the balls of your feet. Let your neck be soft. Let your head be heavy. Let your back release. Let your shoulders release. Release any tension you don't need to be holding in your body. And then release your hands from underneath your feet. Bring your big toes back in to touch. Bend your knees, Utkatasana. Hands together, right elbow outside of your left knee twist. Keep your knees in line, even out your sacrum. It's not good to, to twist your sacrum. We're not trying to twist in the sacrum. It's a spinal twist, not a pelvic twist. And then release, come forward. And let's try crow. We haven't played with crow in a while. So hands down underneath your shoulders. Spread your knees wide. Bring your knees to the backs of your triceps as high up as you can. I, I try to scrunch my body really low so I can get my knees up high and my elbows as far out. It gives you more base there. And then come up on your toes. Look up. Shift your weight forward, lifting one leg and then the other. And when you get to crow, if you get to crow, take five breaths. Honest breaths, in and out. Stay as long as you can. You have to exit early. So you exit early. And then if you can, if you haven't exited already, even if you have exited, let's try to jump back from crow. So quickly, not quickly, but I mean, just do it. Just do it. Come into crow and then just send your knees back. Deep back. Straighten your legs. High plank, chaturanga, upward facing dog. Two. Downward facing dog. Nice job, you guys. Take a couple of breaths. Hmm. Lift your right leg up. Bend your knee and bring it through low lunge. Toe heel your foot out. Drop your back knee. Bring your hands to the inside, runner's lunge. So maybe you bring your foot up a little bit closer to the top right corner of your mat. Maybe you could put your elbows down, your forearms down on the mat or on a block. Maybe you can't. And again, if your friend were saying, I can't do this, so I'm a terrible person, what would you say to that friend? And can you say those same words to yourself? And maybe that doesn't apply in this shape, right? Maybe you're like, I don't know, I'm fine with what I'm doing here. But I, I think you know that there are other situations in your life in which you are awfully critical. We all are. We're human beings. Come on up. Side plank. 
Either your left knee stays on the ground or you come up to the edge of your left foot, lift your right arm up. Take a couple of breaths. And then lift your right leg up. Let's give it a try. Whether your knee or edge of your foot is on the ground. And then bring your right leg down again. Right hand down, high plank. Make your way to downward facing dog. And from down dog, lift your left leg up. Step it through the lunge. Drop your right knee. Toe heel your foot out. And come into runner's lunge. Allowing this side of your body to show up as it does with minimal editorial commentary. All right, can we step into, it isn't good or bad, it just is. And that doesn't mean we're complacent, but it means we're not reactive. We can make changes from a place of calm and a place of acceptance rather than a place of agitation and resistance. Come on up and side plank on the right side, meaning keep your right knee down and right hand down or right side of your foot, left side lift. And get to Vasistasana and then experiment with lifting up your left leg. A couple of breaths. Bring your left foot back down. Left hand back down. Make your way to downward facing dog. And then when you get to down dog, Step, hop, jump, walk, come to the top of your mat. Halfway lift, lengthen. Exhale, fold. And rise up. Come to standing, bring your hands over your head. Bring your hands together and pull that energy into your heart. We're going to do a little bit of balancing. If you have a block, you might want to grab it and put it toward the top of your mat. And if you don't have a block, you can use a water bottle or you can just do your best, which I hope is what you're doing anyway. And you know, when I say that, do your best, which I hope you're doing, please understand that your best fluctuates every day. Stand at attention, Tadasana, at the top of your mat. So Tadasana is actually with your arms down by your sides. Extended Tadasana is with your arms up. But let's be a regular Tadasana, arms by our sides. And shift your weight into your right foot and begin to come into airplane. Just teeter-tottering forward here. Arms come behind you, palms stay facing the floor. That's airplane. We're not in warrior three. So in airplane, you bring a little bit of up dog into your chest and your upper body. So again, heart moves forward, shoulders move back, arms stay engaged, palms face the floor, energy through your fingertips. And then bring your hands together at your heart and begin to come into half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. Opening up, bringing your right hand down onto the floor of that block, whatever. Opening up your body to the left, left hand rises. And ideally here, you don't have a lot of weight on the block. You can even be balancing. Ideally, your torso is parallel to the ground. And then bring your left hand down. Do standing splits for a moment. 
both hands on the ground or on the block. Let your head be heavy. Your left leg stays lifted. And then bring your left leg down to meet your right. Switch sides with your block if you used it. Halfway lift, inhale. Hold. Lengthen the crown of your head forward. Lengthen. Again, that maybe that imaginary bar. Pulling your hips back a little bit. And then forward fold. Take that length down. Can you even notice? Notice a shift in the energy. Rise up to standing. Extended mountain pose. Arms up. Ta-da. Hands together. Pull your energy into your heart and allow your hands to come down by your sides. Shift your weight into your left leg and teeter-totter forward into airplane. Jet fuel coming out of your fingertips, right? So the, the jet fuel, there's a lot of energy there. So your fingertips are engaged. Up dog in your upper body. Shoulder blades are moving toward each other. Heart is moving forward. Bring your hands at, together at your heart. Half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. Opening your body to the right. Reaching your right arm up. Energy through all the points. And then right arm down. Right hand down, standing splits. And bring your right foot down, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, fold. Utkatasana. Might need to block again in a minute. Fold, fold. Halfway lift, lengthen up. High plank. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Rock forward. Chaturanga. High plank. Down dog. Lift your right leg up. Rock forward. High plank to Chaturanga. High plank again. Downward facing dog. Right leg down. Left leg up. Shift forward. High plank. Chaturanga. Back up. Three-legged dog, right leg down, left leg down, right leg up. Bring it through, low lunge. Warrior one. We're going to do a triangle. And if you want to use your block for triangle, position it now outside or inside of your right foot. Rise up, warrior one. Right away to warrior two. Straighten your right leg and reach. And tilt. Perhaps using the block on the outside or inside of your leg to help get length in your torso. So it isn't about leaning on the block. In fact, you could lift both arms up and you'd maintain that torso engagement. But it might be helpful for leverage to open up wider. Nashtanga yoga, they, uh, you, you move eventually to being able to grab your big toe in half moon, in a triangle. Now rise up. Turn your feet parallel or pigeon toed. Squeeze your shoulder blades together, open your chest, press or eat a bow. Maybe grab on your big toes. Try again. Remember when we slid our hands under our feet before, and then I invited you guys to rock forward into the balls of your feet. So that invitation again here, maybe you rock forward into the balls of your feet instead of leaning into your heels, trusting your strength that it's going to hold you up, and then release, rise up. Warrior two, front of your mat. Get, get in position, warrior two, flip your right palm, and now let's take a nice longer 
reverse warrior. Lifting up as you move down. Reach your fingertips back and come on down to the mat. Bring your hands one on either side of your right foot. Step back, high plank, chaturanga, up dog, optional push up on your way to downward facing dog. Lift your left leg up. Low lunge. Warrior one, position the block if you want to use it on the outside or inside of your left foot. Warrior one. Warrior two. You don't have to use a block at all. You can have your hand on your left shin or thigh. It's not about creating tension. It's not about pushing harder than what your body wants to do today. It's about a partnership between ego and body. body respecting your mind's desire to push, your body respecting your, your, your wish to get fitter, to get thinner, uh, not thinner, oh God, I really wish I had not said that, fitter or more flexible, but also your mind respecting where your body actually is and its ability. Come on up. Turn your feet parallel or pigeon-toed again. Clasp your hands behind your back. Open up your chest and then bow forward, allowing your hands to come overhead and off your back as much as possible. So, you know, I think my, my brain going into that automatic patter, patter and pattern of you want to get thinner just shows how pervasive it is in our society. So I am, I am openly and honestly checking myself on that right now. I'm inviting you to check your own pattern, pattern, biases, rise back up. We can't change what we're not aware of. Warrior two to the front of your mat, commit to the shape, and then reverse warrior. So until we own our biases, Left hand moves back, left knee moves forward. We can't begin to change them. Back down to the mat. Make your way to downward facing dog. Hmm. And drop to your knees. And cross your feet, sit over. If you wanted to do a jump through, you're welcome to do a jump through. And bring your feet out in front of you, for starters. And then we're gonna do a um, half hero's pose. So lean over onto your right hip, bend your left knee, and bring it behind you. Keep your right foot engaged. You might stay here you might move further back. We usually do a full hero's pose. We're doing a half hero's pose today. So noticing the difference in how it impacts your body, how it shows up in your body. If you want to move further back, same rule applies as, in we're, as when we're in full hero, meaning keep your knee on the ground. And then come on up and switch sides. Bring your right knee, left knee out, shift onto your left side, bring your right foot back behind you and re-engage. You might even like lift up a little bit to get more of your sit bones on the ground. And then as your body is willing, come on back. Keeping your right knee on the ground. So, so for a lot of us, that's where humility comes in. 
I've seen plenty of people practice and they want to get further down. They want to get their elbows down. They want to lay on the ground, but they lift their knee up. And that just puts so much pressure on your knee. Please don't take your knees for granted. Come on up. Straighten out both legs. Shake them out a little bit. Maybe move them left to right, up and down. And then let's come into full hero, but we're going to do a camel on the way. So stand up onto your knees. Bring your hands onto your low back. Squeeze your shoulder blades, I mean uh, your elbows. Squeeze your elbows toward each other. Lift your heart. Keep the pressure on your back so that you're lifting up as you trace your gaze across the ceiling, across the sky. If you have it in your practice to go further, do so without losing the alignment of hips over knees and then come on back up separate your heels wide enough that you can sit your butt down there full hero's pose go to your degree you can widen your knees but just leave them on the ground doing this pretty warm in the practice so maybe you can go further if you can lay all the way down on the ground you might Lift your hands overhead and grab opposite elbow, creating a, a deep bridge in your back. Deep stretch in your quadriceps. Honoring your knees once you hear a, a pop or a snap, you've gone too far. And why would you do that to yourself? I mean, sometimes we do it by mistake, but why would you take a, a yoga shape further than your body wants? That's ego. Come on up. Hands and knees. Cross your ankles behind you and bring your feet out in front of you. Flex your feet, bring your knees out in front of you. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I am just messing everything up today. Straighten your legs. Flex your feet, lift your arms up, and bow forward. As always, length. It's not about touching your toes. It's about trying to get your forehead beyond your toes. So go as far as you can, create as much length as you can, and then perhaps allow your chin to come to your chest. So get length, and then allow for some roundness some softness, like a tortoise coming into its shell. There's nothing wrong with resting, with recharging, with needing to go into your shell every now and then, especially now that the world is starting to open up again, vaccinations, and I was just driving the other day and there was traffic. My God, traffic. You know, we've been very isolated. We've been very in our shells. And whether you liked it or not, a lot of us just got really used to it. Roll up. We're going to do double pigeon. So bend your, well, you're going to bend both knees for a minute. And then bring your right shin parallel to the top of your mat. And your right thigh is coming straight out. And then bring your left ankle on top of your right knee. So your left ankle's kind of hanging over the right knee. And as you can see, my left knee is quite far up. That's just how my body works. If this is too uncomfortable for you, uh, some people are going to have their, their shins stacked, knees both low. If this is super uncomfortable for you, you can just sit cross-legged. And, and wherever you are, if you want to take it a little further, Bow forward. Actually, come on up for a sec. Let's do an arm position here. So bring your right arm up and allow it to drop behind your back. If I had a strap, I'd encourage you guys to use it. Left arm up behind your back. See whether you can clasp hands and then bow forward. And if you can't clasp hands, just take the position anyway. You're still getting the benefit of opening up your shoulders. Come on up and switch sides, straighten your legs out, 
and then bring your left shin parallel to the top of your mat, left thigh coming straight out, right ankle on top of your left knee. We'll take the arm position in a minute. Go see if you can bow forward here. If you need to bow forward here, if you're getting enough just as you are. And if you are bowed forward, come on up. Lift your left arm up, bend it behind your back. Right arm comes at your side and then lift up to meet your left hand if possible or just fake it, bow. Or don't bow. Some people need to go further in these shapes to get more benefit, to get the sensation in their bodies. Come on up, release. Bring your feet out in front of you. Lay down onto your back. Bring your palms down by your sides and use some momentum. Come on into plow. If your feet can touch the ground, maybe you clasp your hands. If not, support your low back. And then even if you're not supporting your low back already, bring your hands onto your low back and move into shoulder stand. So the final inversion I promised. And let's take 10 breaths. You're already at, let's say two. Try not to move your legs around. Try to let your feet stay up toward, toward-ish the ceiling, right? You're a little bit like leaning. But you want to get the benefit of the inversion. Let's say four more breaths. It can be challenging to stay in these shapes. And then let your feet come down over your head toward the floor. Hands down and roll out. Happy baby. Keep the soles of your feet pointing toward the ceiling. Bend your knees either side of your hips, ribs, grab your feet or your ankles, inside or outside. And try to let your tailbone come toward the ground as you continue to pull your knees down. So this is another hip opener, actually. And then bring your right knee on top of your left knee, whale's tail. Grab onto the edges of your feet. Once again, try to put your tailbone down, bringing your knees in towards your chest. Trying to let your shoulders relax. Trying to undo any tension. And then switch. Right leg is under, left knee is on top. Grab on any ankles or your outsides of your feet. Relax your shoulders, relax your tailbone down to the ground. Not holding these for nearly long enough. Bring your knees in, unwind. Drop your knees to the left. Turn your head to the right. Tee out your arm to the right. You can tee both arms out. Whatever feels good to you. Maybe you want your left leg, left hand on your outer right leg and then come on back center. Other side. Knees to the right, head to the left. Come on back center. Hug your knees in one more time if you want. And then release Shavasana. Lay on your back. Final resting pose. So if you missed what I was saying at the beginning, I was talking about a, a book that I'm reading, written by a, a college friend of mine named Sophronia Scott. 
called The Seeker and the Monk, Everyday Conversations with Thomas Merton. I don't know how well you can see that. And uh, what I was saying was that doing this yoga is most of the time very enriching and I love sending out the offering. But sometimes it feels a little bit pointless and that I was reading this book and Sophronia was talking essentially about people stepping into a quieter version of themselves that we've been granted the time for in quarantine and also people creating offerings and she mentioned this yoga and that was an infusion that I needed it was confirmation that what I'm doing makes a difference because we don't always know that and I also want to underscore the value of kind words and I don't know what she intended when she put those words out there but I certainly know how they impacted me and I know that we underestimate the value of our own kindness and the words we share with others so I encourage you to put those out and I encourage you to give that same kindness to yourself Come to a space of gratitude. You can stay in Shavasana or you can make your way to sitting. But for a few more moments here before we end our practice, gratitude. Goals. But it means that we are where we are. We have what we have. in this online offering. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Namaste. If you have any questions about yoga or the UCCS Wellness Center or anything you think I might be able to answer for you, feel free to reach out. Namaste.